Hey guys, this is Chesney Hawks here. You are watching My Hammers 11 with the one and only Russ. Hi everybody, Russ from My Hammers. I don't know why I did the salute, but hi everyone, Russ from My Hammers 11. Hope you are all safe wherever you channel. Please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon to make events and we put new content on. As always, let's thank our lovely channel sponsor, Untuck It. Da, 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 da. Check my description below. So, I've had, a lot of, I've had a lot of messages and people have, you know, shouted at me across the street and stuff like that. They, they, you, you know, you like the outside the bubble stuff. So we've got another one. We like buses. You wait for one and two come along at once. Obviously, we had yesterday, we had Alex from the Reading Fan. Check that one out. It's a really good episode. Alex is a, um, a senior associate producer at Sky Sports or something like that. But anyway, it's very, very good. So today, we've got... A fellow Clariton Bluer, a fellow Clariton Bluer. Um, it's a it's a guy that I we we first met I think on the Wolves channel randomly, and hopefully we'll get dazzling Dave from the Wolves Wolves fan on soon. But it's it's Jude Jude Ash. Where is he? There he is. Hey Jude, how you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Um, glad to be on the channel. Thank you for having me on, and I'm uh, excited to uh, be involved. Thank you very much. No, I wanted, wanted to get you on. We had, we had a really good giggle at the uh on dave's channel and i thought you know what? i think it'd be good to get you out jude tell everyone about yourself man okay so uh i'm an aspiring young journalist um, and i'm determined to show that no matter the barrier uh, or disability that i can still be involved in something i love and um, so it's my dream to become a sports journalist and over the last sort of three or four years i've been trying to document my journey to becoming a sports journalist and i think it's a very competitive world so i've just been trying mm. to get that a little bit more experience that will hopefully help me on my career. And then, of course, I'm a Villa fan, so Aston by surname, Aston Villa by nature. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And and, and that, that's what I thought was great, because you're, you're totally right. Just because, I mean, particularly, if anything, Jude, to be perfectly honest, in the last year, you know, it's, I mean, as I said, we had, we had Alex on yesterday, and he was talking about how, you know, they, it's not about even getting out of the house now to be a journalist now, isn't it? Really, you know, you can do it with right. a computer and a, and a webcam, as you well know, and, you know, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the channel and stuff like that as well. So, uh, no, it's great, man. It's great. And you've interviewed some great players, some great guests, haven't you? I know, I know I've done all right, but you've done all right as well. Yeah, I've been quite lucky and fortunate. And I think it's quite crazy when I look back at sort of what I've done over the last sort of three or four years. and it all comes down to sort of hard work. You know, it's always the, you have to get yourself out there and network yeah. in this industry uh, like you've done. And I'm doing the same. And when you get that message to say that you can interview a certain player or a certain person, it's the best feeling in the world. It is. Yeah, it is. Or you get, or for me, it's you get the phone number from someone else and they send <laughs> you the phone number and you're like, and then, I mean, you know, I, I, I can totally relate to, to you as well, Jude, in that, you know, I mean, I've only been doing this for, for a year and and where I was a year ago, if someone looked at my phone book a year ago to look at my phone book now, it's like, it's ridiculous. I, 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 I mentioned it the other day to someone, I plugged my phone into my, my, my car. Hello. Hello. Someone's got a fancy car um, and the, the car airplay came up and it's got your, your last text messages or WhatsApp messages. And it was just ridiculous. It was just ridiculous. The people who, who you know, who I've been in communicado with now and it's, it's great, isn't it? And and, that's, and and I I know you're going to be some some amazing players and amazing managers and, and personalities, but the thing I so always surprised me is just how normal they are. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're just normal people. Definitely, and I I, I totally agree with you. Like um, I interviewed uh, Mick McCarthy, former Wolves manager, and he was just totally down to earth and put me at ease throughout the interview. And there have been so many people that I've interviewed, and I'm just so grateful for them because yeah. they're giving me up their time to speak to me, and they're yeah they are just normal people that you know they do that they go around do the day-to-day -day work and they're just more than a footballer and one yeah. of the things i noticed recently i interviewed a ben foster and he is the one of the nicest guys in yeah, football. yeah yeah um he's so cool and so calm and he i asked him about because there was some links uh, suggesting him going to manchester city you know i like some footballers they give you the typical boring answer no no yeah. I'm, I'm interested in, in staying at watford blah 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 and he just went oh yeah i'll I'll go to Man City, I'll, I'll vlog the life out of it, I'll get in front of Pep Guardiola and just, he was just joking about it and yeah, you yeah. don't get that from every footballer, do you? No, you don't. I think also, I, I think there's a certain breed, I mean, it was funny, I was talking to Alex about this yesterday actually, and he was saying how like the newer crop of footballers, because a lot of stuff they repurpose for Sky goes into YouTube and stuff, and he was saying that, you know, the, the, the newer crop, of, and I think Ben Foster's probably an exception to the rule, because Ben Foster's just got it, 
he just got it. He's yeah, he's obviously with the, the GoPros and he's been on Jack's podcast and he's you know, and Jack loves him as well. And but sort of the Declan Rices of this world and Jack Green issues and people like that. If you say it's on YouTube, they, they you know they're on it because they know you they know about YouTube, they know the reach, the potential reach it can be. Um and and in anything, it's the because obviously I interview a lot of the older players. And they they don't get it. They don't understand it. They always think it's this newfangled thing, but actually it's not. It's like it's. I don't even watch TV now. Really, I might watch one or two programs religiously a week, but everything else is on YouTube. And yeah, uh, yeah and and even more so now. You know, and even if you don't want to watch YouTube, you're on Netflix. You know, you're not necessarily on your TV. It's all you know in your laptop or tablet or whatever. So um, no, mate, it's really interesting. I find it fascinating, and uh, how someone like Ben Foster's just like taken what's quite a—I mean, I mean, it's quite personal. Yeah, it's quite a private world, sort of the world of a footballer, unless Amazon come with their cameras and stuff and do a big documentary. Mm. And even like when he puts the GoPro in the corner, and like there was that game when it and I can't remember who scored, but the other yeah, team no, they no. came and like, proper like posed it, and it's like fair play to him, you know. Yeah, he's uh, anyone who hasn't seen it, go and check out Ben Foster's YouTube channel, it's brilliant, it's absolutely brilliant. He just gets it, man. And you don't get that in, in social media and footballers, you know, they tend to stick to their brand and stuff like that. So it's nice to have a glimpse out there. And as you said, people just give up their time to talk to you. I always find it really, um, really humbling, you know, really, really humbling. Yeah. And um, a lot of credit goes to Ben because I feel like he, he takes a lot of um a lot of credit for him to get himself out there and do it because yeah. as he said he said in the interview that the players at first were a bit skeptical because yeah, of course the, change, the changing room is a safe place yeah and but he's just turned that completely the opposite way which is brilliant yeah no i totally agree man right let's get let's go on to villa so good season this season isn't it yeah it's, it's been, been a great good. season yeah it's been brilliant um i think this season feels a bit like uh two halves if that makes sense yeah yeah um, we had we had a brilliant 20 end to 2020 uh we had some brilliant results um but i think the main the main talking point about why we've done so well this season is it because of the recruitment i think yeah. dean smith looked at the problems we had last season surviving actually against yourselves at west ham that's what i mean season. yeah turnaround yeah from that yeah and then by one point and then um this this season getting the recruitment right we we got quality over quantity uh last summer and you should have, just have to look at the additions like martinez holly watkins matty yeah. cash um and they've been brilliant and i think that's what really pushed us on this season yeah no i agree man and as i say it's, it's a total um total sort of turnaround from obviously yeah last season obviously there was that you had to get that point to get I me mean, you per you were so, actually you weren't really it was a bit up and down wasn't it really i think it was a team and and i remember you it was the only because obviously there's been no one know at the bunny bunny stadiums so it was the biggest cheer i heard when when you guys scored yeah because you scored first didn't you and all the yeah. directors all the villa directors were like yeah you know like i, I could hear them for that it was so weird hearing like someone cheer a goal and then I think last, then straight away it was given away. You know, I think we, we got the equaliser. Oh, no, that last season. Yeah, but that's typical West Ham. It's like it's something about me wearing claret and blue. It's probably typical Burnley as well, and typical Scunthorpe and, and all that <laughs> lot. But uh, no, it's good to see. And and you, you tell you what, I think some of there's some great. You know, Ollie Watkins, obviously, you know, great purchase. Um, yeah, big fan of his. Big. I was gutted. You know, it was it was one that I really would have liked to have seen at West Ham, yeah, particularly even more so now because I think if we had. Someone like Ollie Watkins, we'd be in the Champions League, not the Europa League, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Um, yeah. But no, good luck to him, man. Good luck. And it's great. And I love it. I love it. And actually, the sec and this season, it seemed like you guys belonged in the Premier League. Do you know what I mean? Last yeah. season was, was a season where it was, it was a struggle. But this season, it's like, right, OK, belonged. And, you know, you should be a top 10 team regularly. And and hopefully that, you know, next next step is... You know, challenging for the, the European places, whether it's the conference, whether it's the league or Europa League, or whatever. And that's that's the way it should be. Do you know what I mean? I mean, too many clubs are coming in and they and like like some like Wolves, for example, they came in and went in a blaze of glory, got to seventh and qualified for Europa Leagues, and then they've done nothing this season, have they? Sorry, Dave, but you haven't. Um, and no, so I, agree with you. I think it's I think a, a lot of people raised eyebrows when we come in into the Premier League and we spent over 100 million yeah. on i think it was 11 plays but what people don't understand is that had to be done we had an aging mm. squad so either way we, we had to sign a lot of players 
yeah, 100 billion on paper looks like a lot of money. Well, it only worked out to about 9 million a player, yeah. which is nothing these days. And then it, we we finished 17th. And, and the big question this year was we just had to improve. And we we improved we improved mass, massively. But the difference for me is we've competed against top sides. Yeah. Look at the results against Liverpool, the shock 7-2 result. Um, you know, results against Tottenham, Chelsea, doing a double over Arsenal. You you seem to be our bogey team this season. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's it's nice for a change. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, to be honest, yeah, Jesse did turn up that day. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, ours is a complete reversal. It used to be our our bogey teams used to be anyone bar the greedy fourteen, or greedy six rather. So the humble fourteen, all of them were our bo- bogey teams, really. But this season, it's the other way around. We we really haven't performed with the top teams as much as we, sh- we usually do. But the teams below us, we picked up points, and there's more teams below us than there are above us. So vis a vis. We've had a right season. We've done all right. I mean, you know, it's it's it was nice. It's nice considering where we have been recently and throughout our own whole, whole, my whole West Ham sporting career. You know, we we sort of nail biting come April. We haven't, haven't had to worry about it from about November onwards that we were going down. So it's been nice. It's been nice, particularly when there's no we haven't been able to go to the stadium. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you know, I mean, there's. That, that David Moyes is manager of the season, in my opinion. Of course, yeah. Opinion. For me, he is. He won't win it, but he is. He really is. Yeah. I mean, the, the way he's turned the team round from from being 16th, wherever, I can't remember where we were last season, but, you know, we weren't particularly 16th, 15th, something like that, to, you know, to, to be honest, two points off Champions League. Easily should have been Champions League, to be perfectly honest. Um, but that's just my West Hamness, you know. Do you feel hard done by not getting the Champions League? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. No, I don't. I really don't feel, feel hard done by it because it's. I think that would be a step too far for West Ham at the moment. We've done that before. So basically, we got rid of David. So David Moyes kept us up. We had we had Billich. David Moyes kept us up. They got rid of him. Brought in Pellegrini. Spent two hundred million pounds off of players, Haller and 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 uh, Anderson. And I mean, four nails was a good buy, but you know he starts by. And uh, we we ran before we could walk. And um, and for me. You, you know, it's about a project, and it's like, I mean, how you guys are doing it. You last season, you know, you're not by the skin of your teeth, but you stayed up this season, reason of, like, like comfortable, comfortable season next year, push on. And I think that's, yeah. I think that's where we need to be. We need to be regularly competing for the Europa League places for a couple of years and then push on to the Champions League spots because, yeah. I mean, this year's going to be, this has been unusual. This year's been a season like none ever, and hopefully will never be this type of season again. So, Results are just out the window, you know. So, um, but it's it's a, for me, it's about progress. Um, and I think with the Europa League, because of the stage we've gone into, if we'd qualified for the Champions League, we'd have probably qualified fourth. We'd have had to still qualify to get into the group stages. We're already in the group stages, Europa League. So there's that guaranteed money and guaranteed exposure, guaranteed, um, you know, uh, marketing ability of the club to get in players. You know, so yeah, for, oh, for yeah. me, I, I agree with you in terms of the progression because. Villa, you know, there were there was a point in the season where you know we were challenging for those European spots. Yeah, and we fell away purely because of our squad depth. We yeah, we yeah. haven't got Same the greatest us. squad squad depth. And you know when Grealish was out again, we struggled. So it, even if we were to push into Europe this this season and got into Europe, I don't think it would have been sustainable because we'd had to sign a whole batch of new quality of players. Whereas if we do it, let's say we get this this summer. Our main target is to get a another creative midfielder to support sure. Grealish, mm. uh, and then let's say next season we do get into Europe, then we've got next summer to build, and it's just about yeah. continuing to progress. And I'd much rather do it that way rather than just have one freak season, yeah, and and do nothing for the next five years. Totally, because what's the point then? It's just point. I mean, that's the trouble with us. We that's that is our basically our roller coaster that being a West Ham fan is. We have a good season every about five seasons. So the last good season. Berlin, yeah, right? exactly. It was. It is. It was the last decent season. Was the boat? And, and again, when we just lost out, it was very similar to this year. Just lost out in Champions League spots because we lost the key player. So we lost Payet this year. We lost Declan Rice uh, at the wrong time, and same with Payet at the wrong time. Um, and before that, it was probably two thousand five season was a good season for us. So we got to the FA Cup final. After that, would have been another five seasons where we got to the ninety nine two thousand where we finished fifth which was the highest ever Premier League. So it is literally every five years. So now I don't want that. I want another, I don't care if we're seventh next season or eighth, you know, as long as we're in that six to nine 
bracket. That's where I want to be next season. And then you see us progress. And and you're totally right. We we had our squad. Our squad basically, the the, the size of our squad cost us Champions League because we didn't have a replacement for Declan Rice. We've played basically most of the season, probably about half a season without a striker as well. So and then Antonio's in and out. So look. It's all done. It's all done and dusted. And we can look forward to some European games. And next season, hopefully, you guys, you guys are challenging as well. And you know, we 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 knock some of those greedy six properly out of the uh out of the contention. That's what I hope for. You, us, Leicester. Yeah. Smash I agree. It. I think we have a lot of things in common just hearing you talk there. Not only are we claret and blue, I think yeah. we 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 both have the same aspirations and you might be a, a season ahead of us, but hopefully we can Let's hope the two claret and blue teams can break into that top six alongside you, Leicester's. Yeah, that's what I mean. And and, and hopefully Everton, you know, although they maybe not now we've been, with Ancelotti gone, but you know, I think there's there's it's not guaranteed. I mean, look at Arsenal this season. I can't see them well unless they have some significant a significant step change. They, it's gonna be much to muchness for next season. Spurs, you know, if they get in Conte or whatever, is it gonna make much difference? Probably not. You know, they've had, long, well, they've had some fantastic managers. They had Pochettino, who is a phenomenal manager. They had Mourinho. Mourinho is a winner everywhere. The only place he hasn't won is Tottenham, really. He hasn't won a trophy at Tottenham. He's won trophies everywhere else. So what more can they get? What's 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 Conte going to bring? You know, he's going to bring a bit of excitement, but then is he going to bring a trophy? Well, you know, a lot of others haven't. So anyway, yeah. as long as they don't win nothing, as long as we finish above them, that is my season done, Jude. If we were like 18th and Tottenham were 19th, we both went down. That's a good season for us because we're still above Tottenham. <laughs> that's it. That's, it, that's it. it, man. That's it. Right. Okay. So what we try and do uh, on these things, we try to we try and put together a, a combined 11. Um of players who have played for both teams. The reason being is, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a bit different for you and us because we're in the same colours, but, you know, it doesn't matter what shirt, what colours you wear, we're all the same underneath. And there's, and actually it just shows how much um, P, team share players. You know, it's one of those things. And, it's, and ironically, the first time I ever did it, um, the first was for uh, was Sunderland, Matt, who does a show called My Sunderland Eleven. Good channel name. Yeah, where have we got that idea from? Um, and um, and he put together, we put ours ele- our 11s together. The first position, there wasn't one. There was not one ever in history who'd played in goal for West Ham or Sunderland at the same, yeah, for both teams. So we buggered it up after the first. So we had to put Jimmy Walker in, bless him, um, just because he was a coach. Right. But I don't think we have a problem here. As I said, we're going, we're going to play three at the back, aren't we? I think there's a lot of midfielders. Yeah. We have a lot of midfielders. So, and what we try and do is, you know, you, you'll have some players, I'll have some players, we'll sort of, we'll, we'll take it turns, I tend to let you go first and say, you know, you're going to put him first and, and vice versa, and usually we've got the same players. And I think yeah. goalkeeper-wise, let's start, because I think we might have the same player in goal. Who have you got in goal, uh, Jude? Uh, David James, I think. He had yes, in the simple, yeah. simple, <laughs> David James. Um, I love David James. Yeah, uh, I like seeing him on Sky Sports, obviously, he's, um, he does some good punchy work, and yeah, he had a short stint at Villa. And uh, I, I remember actually just thinking about it off Villa topic, but uh, he's come a lot, come up a lot in the media recently because uh, Allison scored that goal in just reminding me when uh, Stuart Pierce put him up top of the striker, yeah, so, for Man City, Man weren't City. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he uh, yeah, we had it with Valley Mom recently. He's, he's a top boy, Jay. I, I really like him. He's he was, and you talk about people being open and honest, um, he really was like more so than I thought it'd be because I was, he was part of a season for us where we went down on 42 points. Um, and we had David James, we had Joe Cole, we had Michael Carrick, we had Jermaine Defoe. We had this team that went down on 42 points. Um, and talking to him about it, he's like, it was like, well, it was, he, he sort of made some suggestions where it happened and why it happened. Yeah. So fair play. And then he gave his 11, and um, he was at the end of the. I think he put Jermaine Defoe and Freddie Canute out front. I was like, very good. Then, um, then the next day, he was filming at West Ham uh, with a few other guys that I've interviewed already. And he was like, they were talking. Oh, I did, so, you see, I did, I did the thing with Rush yesterday. Oh, great, great, great. And he went, I didn't put Paladin Canio in. I can't <laughs> believe I didn't put Paladin. 
of all the players, and if you got all the players, players, probably the one player he's probably scored more goals against him in training than anyone else. He doesn't put them in, but we'll put Jamo in. Jamo's Jamo's an easy one. Let me uh, let's let's bring up the team sheet as we go through, so we can do it uh, together. That's it. There we go. Right there we go. So put James in. We'll put James in. He's in. Jamo's in. Right. Okay, Joe. Let's go into defence. Who's your first defender? Yeah. Who's your first defender? Okay. Right. He's he's not an out and out defender. Well, centre back. But we're going to have to adapt a little bit here. Nice. I've gone with Carlos Sanchez. Carlos Sanchez. Oh, lovely. I'm going to... Yeah, OK. Carlos Sanchez. Yeah. I, I was I was a bit torn. I was struggling on, on the three at the back, so I just stuck him in at centre back. You think he'd probably do a job when he's a defensive midfielder. You know, they yeah. tend to just... Yeah, he's, he's tend to... Yeah, he was, yeah. He, was, he, was, he, was, he was effing all... He was effing useless at West Ham, but... <laughs> But do you know what? I'll put him in. I'll put him in because okay. I've had to do the. I've had to do the same thing. So we'll put, we'll put Carlos Sanchez in. Why not? Why not Carlos Sanchez? I mean, we signed him when he was. He was, he was in Florentina when he would signed for us, um, and he was ripping it up in this in the in Serie A. But yeah, he was. Yeah, not great. Is it Watford? Is he still at Watford? Yeah, I think he's still at Watford now. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, we'll see him next season, Carlos. God bless him. <laughs> right. Okay, we'll put Carlos Sanchez in. Right. Next defender, I'm gonna I'm gonna put one in the hat. Ginger Pele, James Collins. Yeah, agreed. That's gotta the, be. That's the easy one. Central of defence. Gotta be GP. Uh, an absolute. I don't know what how how you how the the, the Villa fans yeah take. I imagine they same as us. But honestly, he's like God at West Ham. Yeah. No, I absolute agree. And he, he had a he had a brilliant spell at West Ham, didn't he? And then um, okay at Villa. He he also came back as well. Uh, couple of years ago when we were in the championship and he was training for, with us for a while yeah he was a free agent but he just uh i think it was due to an injury that he didn't sign a pro didn't contract with us again yeah well i mean that's and we, we love a player who goes and comes back as well he did that so obviously he was in between he'd gone he went to you guys uh, and it was almost like the transformation of james collins he left with like this full head of hair full head of ginger hair and a good defender and then obviously he had a few years next to Richard Dunn, basically. He comes back, yeah. shaven head, massive beard, and then he just becomes this absolute legend. You know, it's one of those things which is a bit, bit frustrating with West Ham fans in that, you know, he could have, he should have got, they should have given another year, so he'd have had a testimonial year. Um, yeah, he worked, I think, mean, nine years in total. But he's an absolute gentleman. Um, I love GP. He'll be on one day. And I forgot to say in goal. I forgot in goal as well. We, David James, we could have had Les Seeley, of course. Famous know, yeah, you know, famous goal. Because you talk about goalkeepers playing up front. Les Seeley played up front for us against Arsenal. Um, okay. That was one of his only appearances at West Ham. But, um, yeah, top man, Les. And we've had his, we've had his son on. Uh, his son's Joe's lovely guy. But, yeah, Les, God rest his soul. Um, right, so we've got Carlos San. This is great. Carlos <laughs> Sanchez. We've got uh, GP, Ginger Pelle himself, James Collins. Who else are we going to put in that in that back three? Now, it's a bit before my time, and I don't know much about him, but I did some research, and Good. Gary Charles was the only one that seemed to yep. stand out to me. Can you yep, enlighten yep. me a little bit about what type of player he was? Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he as I say, Gary Charles, um, he, he, he was actually a West Ham fan, actually, oh, okay. ironically. He, he lived, he was born and, and raised um, by, uh, around West Ham. Um, he wasn't a fantastic player for us, I'll be honest. I don't think he probably made, oh, oh, I'm trying to think who, uh, Nigel Khan picked him. He might probably made about a dozen appearances, but he was a big West Ham fan. I know he was. So, he, you know, he he lived my life, my, my boyhood dream. So, but yeah, you're right. He's, um, it's funny, with defenders, we haven't got many defenders who have played for both teams. And then for the rest of the thing, we're all right, aren't we? So we'll just gloss over that. But Gary Charles, he played mili- hundreds of games for Aston Villa. Um, and he was an England international as well. So, look, fair play. You've got yeah. two England internationals in your team already, plus a Welsh international, plus a Colombian international. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're not doing bad so far, to be honest, Jude. Right. Midfield. Shoot. First midfielder, man. Uh, playing in that CDM role just to protect that little bit shaky defence. I think we need it. <laughs> Nigel Riacocca. Nigel Riacocca. Do, do, do. Nigel Riacocca. Now, how was he... Now, how was... I mean, you know, at West Ham, Nige... I mean, we've had, him, we've had him more, quite a few people. We've had Nige on. I like Nigel Riacocca. He, he he turned up. Um, Alan Pardew signed him and from Wimbledon. He was 21. Then he made him captain. 
21 yeah. you know i mean you it's yeah. different now i mean declan rice was 20 is, is is sort of that young age and you don't think twice about him being the captain but it was a lot for nigel Rikoka to be a captain and and we had a great season that season and the following season he didn't do so well uh, and um he almost was got a bit, a bit ahead of himself a bit cocky um and then ended up thinking he could get more he got more money going to villa um and sort of the fans yeah never really sort of he's never put in that sort of you know, looked highly regarded Nigel Rear anymore now, which is a shame because he was a good captain for us. Um, but he played a lot of games for Villa, didn't he? Yeah, he played a lot of games for Villa, and I don't know how respected he is at, at Villa. Um, and he, he did, I, I remember speaking to Gabby Bunglehor, and he was talking about um, it, was, it was in training, and it always used to be uh, Nigel Rear who would have to do the forfeit. Um, <laughs> they'd always put it on him in training. So, yeah, um, again, I, I, because it's a little bit before my time, um, he, he, I don't know much about how he played, but I knew he was well regarded at Villa. And, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, he's, 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 I think he was captain. I mean, must, I mean, I'm really surprised he wasn't captain at Villa as well. Um, so, fair play, you know, fair play. He was a good player. He was a good player for us. He's like that, into that defensive mid, that box to box, good engine yeah. on him. Um, and we got to the FA Cup final, you know, so fair play. Um, under his stewardship. Right, okay, we'll put Nigel Coker in. Right, next one. Uh, all right, I'm going to put in Thomas Hitzelsberger. Yep, I agree. <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah, um, I liked him. Yeah, he, 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 did, he did well under the, when he was playing under... Uh, he was under, playing with pa- Pablo Angel, Juan yeah. Pablo Angel, and yeah, he did, did pretty decent at Villa. Yeah, he was brilliant. Uh, and and he frustrating with us in that he never really... He wasn't like uh, we had glimpses of him, you know what I mean? Because yeah. he was always one of those guys. Anytime he'd, anytime we'd play them, uh, you guys, he would always end up scoring like one of his absolute, you know, Wilbur. wonder shots. You know, he had such a good shot on him. Uh, the Hammer, he was called. So he always had to play for West Ham because his nickname was the Hammer. But um, yeah, no, I liked, I liked him. Uh, he's director of football somewhere now. I think he's director of football Stuttgart. Stuttgart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuttgart, no, he did an interview with the Athletic, and he was talking about his role at Stuttgart and um, his time at Villa, and he said he got some great stories in that. Yeah, interview. no, I'm gonna have to try and get him on. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nobody. actually it's actually easier when they when when they're, when they're working for a club because you just contact the club first rather yeah, than yeah. him personally. So it's quite good. Um, but yeah, no, I remember him scoring an absolute belter of a goal for us. Can't remember who the team we were playing. Proper like one of his. 30 yarders you know lots of power that when he just out of the blue bank just got no backlift just like bosh you know and always took the goalkeeper by surprise and then at half time i remember this really well at half time we interviewed a guy an ex-player called martin allen um mm. nicknamed the mad dog that's his nickname he's been manager at brentford and loads of places lovely bloke but you know box of spanners um and he was uh he'd had a few beers let's be honest he's had a few beers at half time and uh we were interviewing him and the interviewer jeremy basically said to him and uh, what did you think about thomas's goal first half and everyone cheering for mr hitzelsberger and he took the mic off jem and he went yeah that's surprising because the last time a german came down to east end the east end of london he bombed the place i'm like okay uh, and we haven't had martin and on since <laughs> <laughs> okay. so right. yes so uh, we'll seem to say at half time. But that's him. But that was Martin. That was that was Martin yeah. Adam. He's a crazy man. We've had him, he's a, I love he's a gen, lovely bloke, but yeah. We had him on we did a I did a quiz night with him, a game show where I get do a lot of ex players and stuff. And he and he phoned me beforehand and he said, What Martin do you want on the show? Do you want like nice Martin or do you want Martin Martin? And I was like, <laughs> Oh, go on, let's have Martin Martin. Wish I hadn't bothered. Wish I hadn't bothered. He, <laughs> he just pretended he was he permanently had the worst internet connection. He just kept on going, hello, hello. Can't hear him. Can't hear him. Hello, hello. Oh, I was like, mine, shut up. But, but Thomas Hitzelsberger. Right, so we got, that's a good start. Nige, we got Thomas Hitzelsberger, the hammer. Who's going to be next? Now, I left this one blank because I, I wanted some help from you because I was a bit unsure. Sure. What position have you left blank? Centre mid centre mid so right so. okay like okay let's 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 go to the let's go to the the two wings and then we'll see what's left in the centre mids because there's because okay. we can be we can we can be adjustable 
Can't we? We could yeah. be adjustable yeah. with some of these players. Yeah. Um, who have you got on the right hand side then? Right, I'm gonna go because I've seen him play and I loved him at the villa. Robert Snodgrass, yes, the snod father. He's in, he, he, he scored a brilliant. I remember he was under the season when he was under Bruce. Uh, we missed out on the playoff final, but he was just a, he's a brilliant character and um, he scored that wonder strike. I'm not sure if have seen it against uh, Sheffield United away, um, and it, on the edge of the box, and yeah, brilliant character to have around the squad. Um, and I'd love to interview him one day because I'm sure he'd have some brilliant. He'd be great, that. wouldn't he? He'd be great. Yeah. He'd be a really good one. But for me, for, I don't know about you, but I, I, I like interviewing the players. I, I don't. I think. I think it's the same with anything. I mean, if you interview players when they're still playing, hmm. they don't give you what you want. They give you what yeah. the club. You yeah. know. So, so with, I think Snoddy would be great when he retires. Yeah, Do with me, like so like some of the interviews that you you have, you know, you've seen them play. And you can appreciate yeah. them. Whereas yeah. for me, I, I interview someone, I have to do a lot of research and I sure I don't know yeah. the ins and outs. So for example, for me, if I was to interview Snoddy, I would know everything. I, I'd feel like yeah. I'd get on with him so well because I've seen him play, I've watched him play. So I, mm. I appreciate him a lot more. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And I, I'm exactly the same. I actually prefer to interview people. I, I, obviously, I love to, you know, it's great to interview people like, I don't know, david james and people like that and julian dix and people i've seen play who i've idol who are in my hammers 11 as well but um i really enjoy listening to the the older players so we've had guys like brian deer who played bobby moore he won the 65 um cup when uh, fa cup final cup was, he won the 67 uh, european cup with his cup and you know so he's been around in the in the 60s and pat holland and people like that and even sort of in the 80s because i was only a little pup then so frank mcavini and tony cotty and people like that um, we could have. Oh, we could put Frank McAvenny in. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put that. As a, that's that's one you wouldn't have got because he only played a couple of games for Villa um, in the Premier League actually as well. I think. Um, so I love learning about them because the the, the the football was just different. I mean, Brian Deere in the '60s, he was telling me about how they'd they would have these running sessions where they'd run for hours on end, like around mm. the area I know very well because I live in the area. So hours and hours and hours, miles and miles and miles and come back to the training ground and there would be a full roast dinner waiting for them and it's like <laughs> do you know what i mean nowadays we've like supplements and stuff like that and you know oh, i couldn't think of anything worse if i was right that run anyway but you know and then having to have a full roast dinner yeah but i love that stuff and how you know they would get one of the coaches would be on the on the top of the car with binoculars and a fag out of his mouth making sure everyone was doing their running and I mean, we had we had, actually had an interview with Frank Frank McAvenny the other day, and um, he was telling us a story about him and Julian Dix were running around Romford, um, which is where near, near where the, the training ground is, and everyone's beeping their horns. All right, Mac. All right, Julian. Woo. They're at the back, basically, and um, a milk cart stops, and he's like, "Ah, hey, boys, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah." And he's like, "Oh, how's the running going?" And Mac is, "Yeah, we've finished. We've just finished. You couldn't give us a lift back to the check." The, the, could get some lift back to the state, the uh, the training ground. So he gave him a lift back on the back of the milk truck, and then they got off like with like uh, like hundred meters left, and like ran in like oh. <sighs> I remember interviewing um Brian Little, and uh, he, he he was talking about the European Cup and um and the times where there's time where he was training, and um they had to train in the car park. Yeah, uh, because the training ground was something happened to the training ground. I can't remember what, and they're just training in the car park, and everyone was coming up to see them. And it's just those little things that meant to it. We wouldn't see, we wouldn't see these days, no, and no. that pe people appreciate back then. Yeah, they don't, I mean, Brian Deere would say he'd he would get his bicycle, and he would bicycle to the stadium, and Bobby Moore would get the train or the bus in, and people like that. And I mean, for me, it's like you know, I. It, the most exciting thing as a kid was walking down the road and but and seeing a football player across the road you know in your yeah. you know coming out of the supermarket and i mean now it's different now you know you know jack and and and, and lanzini and they, they've all got these beautiful apartments in you know posh parts yeah. of birmingham or, or london and so you won't but, that's, but fair enough you know they own the money now so i totally agree i just think you mean you, you use a little bit of that um what's the word um i can't think of the word my brain's gone to, it's too hot it's too hard. after about 20 degrees my brain just switched off but that's sort of um relate so you can't relate to them as much as you can on a personal level but you appreciate them on a from a professional perspective you know and it changed a little bit there. but put snoddy in i totally agree i was gutted when he went to west brom because he's an incredible team player 
and that great guy around the pitch uh, and around the club. He was always the one that you'd use for if we were doing like spoof videos or taking prank yeah. videos. Always be snoddy. snoddy would Villa, always be uh, with, with Villa, he used to do something called unclassic commentary, um, and he he used to he used to be co com with um, Jack Grealish, and they used to commentate on uh, on previous matches. And I remember Alan Hutton uh, scored a wonder strike as the one against Blues, and and then Henry Lansbury also was celebrating, and he was going, "Look at that Barnet! He's got something on Jack Grealish there." It was just just comical what he was doing. Brilliant. I love it, man. I love it. Right. Okie dokie. So we've got Snoddy, we've got Rhea Coker, we've got Hitzelsberger. Who should we have on the left hand side? Uh, see, I'm not too sure, but I've got Joe Cole at left. At yeah, left, see, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna reserve I'm gonna I might put Joe in the in the sort of the, in the in the advance of the three. I'll I'll, I'll come back to Joe. Okay. For me, I was thinking on the left. Nobby Solano. Yes. See, I, I, I looked at him as well, and uh, he, he looked like a cracking player, and I watched some videos of him. So, yeah, we'll go. Player. I went with Joe Cobb purely because I, I knew the name. Yeah. And and rather than uh, Nobby Solano. We'll put, we'll yeah, put Joe yeah. in. Joe, Joe will be in, don't we? Joe, Joe will, I think. Oh, I, oh, I don't know. Oh, hang, hang on. Right. Here's an yeah, idea. Okay, here we go. Strikers. Hold on. Hold on. The strike. I've, I've just had an idea. Right. We can either have Nobby Solano. We could have Stuart Downing. Yes, uh, that's a shout. Yeah, that's a yeah, shout. That's um, He's yeah, proper journeyman. Uh, proper journeyman. But I mean, you know, he was he was like for us, he wasn't like great until Sam he put him at the top of the diamond. So he went to this little false night and he put him at the top. And I think he got back into the England squad after that for a couple of games. Yeah, yeah. All down, I'm gonna put Downing in. I love Nobby. I've had him on the channel. He's an absolute gentleman. But Downing, I'll put Stuart Downing because he doesn't get a lot of shout outs. Yeah, yeah, let's go with Stuart Downing. Let's go with Stuart Downing. I like that. I just think that's hard nice. And... Yeah, and he'd do well on the le- sort of a, a sort of a left sided. He would have to go up and down quite a bit. Him and Carlos yeah. Sanchez, it's not, not very <laughs> defensively very strong, but does, <laughs> doesn't matter. With David James as a, a blinder in goal. That's just, well, you'll have to, won't he? I think he will have to. Or, or GP will have one of his Man of the Match awards. Um, right, okay, so put Downing in, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking Joe Cole is that sort of the fifth midfielder in sort of the... He'll be playing it as, as, as the 10 for me. Yeah. Because I yeah, think okay. he's... Uh, that That's... Because on the left, you know, although although he may, you know, he played for England on the left um, and stuff like that, for mm. me, that wasn't Joe. Joe was yeah. a a proverbial. We don't get anymore the free roll, you know. When they yeah. just okay, no one does that. That's why Hazard so doesn't. As, as you haven't heard of him for, since he went to Real Madrid, you know he doesn't. They put they decompartmentalized players, and and Joe they did, and um, it's a shame because um, he was a phenomenal player at West Ham. He's a phenomenal talent, and he never really, although he had a fantastic career. I always thought there was another level he could have got to as a player. But because of the way that Mourinho had him, um, yeah. not so much West Ham, but England, they put him on the yeah. left. He, he was on that in England. He was in that era where we, and I hope it doesn't happen this summer in the Euros, where we had so many great talents, yeah, but they just couldn't gel as a team. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. I, I think the the only the only difference I think from that era to this era is I think because they're all. You look at a lot of the the players. It's a very, it's still very in England. It's a, it's a very young squad. It is mm-hmm. like you know, and I think with youth brings adaptability, but also with youth brings the fact that these guys, a lot of them, have played together in the seventeens, the twenty ones, you know, beforehand. So they, you know, so and a lot of them are playing. You know, it's like I, I think you know, midfield. You know, you, you look at Mason Mount. You've got Foden. You've got Greenish. You've got you've got um, oh yeah, Declan Rice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got four or five really strong midfield players there. You've got obviously you've got Bellingham, you've got Sancho. I think, you know, it, it's great that we've got so much youth. The thing that worries me is I think it was the World Cup last time where you needed that sort of that game against Croatia where it wasn't really going the right way. You could have had so if you had someone like a a Frank Lampard's junior or a michael character just to come on and just sort of, you know calm every a little bit experience that's the only thing we haven't got with this team we haven't got yeah. experience 
Um, I mean, even like Henderson being left out as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Henderson. Yes, I mean that's you think someone like that would, you know, just someone just to calm it down. It needs, you know, having youth exuberance is fantastic, but it gets to a point where sometimes you go, actually, just step back, guys, and we can win this. But let's just take it easy, you know, not trying to pressure and, and force passes and stuff like that. But um, yeah, anyway, we digress as we always. But Joe Cole. An yeah. absolute legend, absolute legend for West Ham. He, he you know, he, he played again a boomerang player. Went and came back. We love players that do that, and um, and and he went to you guys and played for you guys as well. So it's all about the claret and blue, all about the claret and blue and Joe. But yeah, I love him, and I love him, and I love him as a as an analyst on BT Sport. I think he's fantastic. Absolutely yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I just him. knows his game. Um, right. Um, other people we could have had. We could have had. Um, Henry Lansbury, we mentioned Henry. We could have had Henry yeah. Lansbury. We could have put him in goal. He, used to, <laughs> he, he was our he was our sub goalkeeper. We never know, used yeah. to have. Yeah. When I was looking at this, I was like, there was a player because West Ham. What I did was I did a quiz. West Ham did a um a quiz of players that had played for uh... Villa and uh, West Ham, and there was just one player, and it was like played for Villa between twenty seventeen and twenty sixteen and twenty eighteen. Yeah. And I'm like, I should know who this is. But who the hell is is this player? And I'm and Henry Dunsbury did not cross my mind one one bit. No, nah. I really rated him. I thought yeah. he was a really good player for us. More, uh, if I remember correctly, it's all like the Championship era. He was playing for us, and I thought he was really skillful. We, we got him from Arsenal, and he was really good. And you know, he was great in the fact that he weren't bad in goal as well. So I don't think we used to have a sub goalie on the bench. We used to have him on the bench. Um, and a couple of times he played in goal when like the goalkeeper yeah. got sent off. And that's brilliant. I remember Phil Jackie Elke used to do that all the time for Everton as well. Um, and that's great. That's, you know, and you've got an extra player. I mean, not now. You've got bloody a million subs on the bench now. But then it was really useful. Um, right, up front. Now, there's, there's, I reckon you're going to go one way and I'm going to go the other way. So you start. <laughs> who's, your, who's your first striker? Okay, I'm going to go with the famous... John Carew scored 37 I goals. I knew he's going to John, John Carew. He's bigger than me than you. Th- yeah, the 37 goals. Um, and he was always famous for that 5-1 against uh, Birmingham City. And he, he did that sort of 5-1 uh, uh, celebration. And then he picked up the, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, he picked up the ball boy uh, at Villa in front of the whole end and celebrated with him. He's always famous Brilliant. for that. Brilliant. So, yeah, I'm going with John, John Carew. Carew. All right, I'm, I'm going to put that one in. Just because I'm going to give you one and I'm going to have one. So, uh, yeah, I'll put John Carew. Yeah. It, again, really, it was really frustrating. He never really emulated his, his Villa career at West Ham. No. He just never did, which was a shame because he was, you know, I thought he was, I always loved him as a player at Villa. He'd always play well against us and I thought he'd do a job. John Carew. Okay. I'll put John, who, who's your second one? And then we'll go and then we'll debate. That. Okay. I've gone with Carton Cole. Okay, right. You've got me caught on car. Okay, right. Okay, so, because I thought, I, I, I put down four strikers. John Carew, okay. bigger than me than you. Yeah. I put Robbie Keane down. Yeah, he's also on my on my uh, reserve list. Yeah, he's a reserve. He, he didn't do, he didn't do it at West Ham. Um, and then the two I, I've put down, who I was going to play, one was Mr. Always Believes in His Soul, Colton Cole. The other one, friend of the channel, Marlon Harewood. Yes, yes, again. yes. Uh, another uh, striker, yeah. See what I mean? We're, we're blessed in terms of no wonder we, we've short on defenders because we're blessed when it comes up top. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. There's too many. Um, yeah, Colton Cole, or I mean, I, I mm, who would I put? I love Colton. I do love Colton. We value him. He's a top boy. But I'm trying to get Mazza. I'm trying to get Marlon Harewood on the on the channel. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming on soon. He's just so busy at the moment. I'm just going to see how many, how many, how many league goals did he get for Villa? Just because, uh, so he played 29, 29 league games. This is not obviously including cups and stuff. Five goals. Okay, 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 okay. And then Colton, because I think you know, yeah, Colton, Colton's one of the. He played almost exactly the same games, but yeah, Marlon Harris scored a couple more goals. So I'm going to put Marlon in. I've given you, yeah. I've given you John Carew. Um, yeah. Which people will hate will will take the Mickey out of me because of he did very well with that. But we'll put in Marlon Harewood. And then we yeah. still we still have a great bench. We still have a cracking really bench. Um we got, Yeah, so uh, we I mean we've got yeah, we've got uh, Robbie Keane, uh, we've got we've got Les Seeley, Robbie Keane, Henry Lansbury, um, we've got uh Nobby Solano, 
Uh, we've got a good bench. We've done well. I think we've done all right. I know, yeah, we, we've done all right. To be they're fair, bad, they're um, a bad team, man. It, my question is, who's the Grealish of that team? And who's the Declan Rice? I think Rio Coca's the Declan Rice. And <sighs> who's the Grealish of that team? Grealish has got to be Joe Cole, isn't it? Yeah. Joe got to be Joe Cole. I mean, he's probably... I mean, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, it's the same as Declan Rice. I think a lot of people, unless they supported the club they, the player played for, they didn't really get him. Yeah, and I think a lot of people didn't get Declan Rice. Oh, he always does is pass the ball straight, and da, 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 da. he doesn't. He, he's a fantastic player. I was the same with Grealish. I'll be honest, because I didn't watch all the games, so I only watched the highlights. And you know, it almost his his person, almost he, he 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 the bad traits of his, you know, he throws himself around. That sort of then sort of muddied my appreciation of him. He's a great player. Greece is a phenomenal player. And probably the most Joe Cole player we've got. The true mm-hmm. Joe Cole player. In fact, is he could easily win a game on his own, Greenish, if he's on it. Um, yeah, Rhea Coca and Declan Rice. Yeah, I mean, Declan Rice is twice the player that Nigel Rhea Coca was. But, um, but yeah, we'll have to do it. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll do that. We'll say that. We'll say that. Okay. That'd be, that'd be, that's a fair, fair compromise. Um, Drew, man, it's been a pleasure. Absolute pleasure, my friend. I've thoroughly enjoyed this last 45 minutes. It's been a giggle. And, um, yeah, it's been good. and yeah, it's been great. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll link, uh, Jude's channel, Jude's journey. We'll uh, link all the channel and, and the stuff. So go and check out Jude's channel and, um, and yeah, find out, look at some of the great players he's interviewed and the great personalities. He's, I saw Gazza on there. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually, it's big. If I show it, is he? Got him. Uh, can you you just see it. Oh, I can just I can just make out Gazza, man. Fair play to you. Fair play, man. Fair play. Right. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Jude. And obviously, thanks to everyone else for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And from myself and from Jude, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Get those jabs when you get your appointments. Come in your, come in your irons. And is it up the villa? Yeah, up the villa. Thank you for up having me villa. on. Come right. in your eyes. Right. Take, take care, everyone. Much love. Bye-bye.